I've got a good eye. I'm, I'm born with a good eye. I like the shots prowling around the corridors. Because we designed the set, because I was the operator. So I designed the set, so the set is just one to get a dolly down, or it was all handheld. Because and we built the lights into the set, so the site lights would be attached to a a board on the side of the set where you can actually dim them, lower them, bring them up. So in a funny kind of way, that was a fairly new way of doing it, but we built the lights into the set. And because I knew everything was going to be more or less handheld, that was, that was the shot. So moving along there through then, seeing the car, seeing the empty ship was kind of beautiful. It's a haunted house. You know, Alien to me is kind of a, really a B, B movie done in an A plus way. The opening shot, that's the stunner. And that is almost entirely Doug Trumbull and his team. I'd drawn the impossible city, dilapidated, ruined future. That's what we were doing because where we've been heading for a while now, I think we're trying to do a U-turn, and I uh, hope we're not too late. And so from that, we the set itself was no bigger than this room. All those effects were done 70 mil, 65 mil. On tracks, there's 17 passes on one negative, so you track in once, come back, track it again, and you're, and you're exposing different parts of your negative. It's a remarkable piece of, because it's not digital, there's no digital work there at all. It's 17 passes on a negative. Well, the hand was on the last day of principal photography in Tuscany, and I'd finished the movie. And I'd gone to Tuscany to do heaven. I couldn't possibly have dry ice with people walking at 48 frames a second, right? Can't do that, dude. But what we found was a wheat field. I thought, wow, that's interesting. Not vines, wheat. And in the wheat is this man wading through this high corn to meet the, his wife and child down the slope, way down the hill. And so we followed him. As he was standing there, he was smoking in the corn. I said, stop smoking. It's 40 degrees. You kidding? As he walked out, he did this with his hand. I said, stop. So you always got to keep your eyes open for a shot. Get the steady cam. We followed the hand. That became the opening shot of the movie. So in a funny kind of way, it becomes a symbol, a metaphor for immortality going to heaven. The four helicopters, the two black hawks and two night birds coming in over the city and landing in the high street. That's all one shot. That's real. It's the first time I used 11 cameras. That's with a guy called Slavomir Isiak. And he said, I hate the sunshine and I only work one camera. He ended up working in Morocco with 11 cameras. I think he enjoyed it. I work with great cameramen. You, you need them. I, I, and I'm very visual. I can operate as a good operator. So that helps me frame things in multi-camera situations because I know what I want. But you still need the cameraman to actually be able to cope with what, who has what stop and how it's going to be. How is it hard to make like a helicopter war action film and not have Apocalypse now in the back of your mind? Apocalypse had Valkyrie. It was the Valkyrie? Uh, the ride of Valkyries. Yeah. No, I never thought about that, but that was a great shot. The music was fantastic, but the shot was good too. Funny thing, I like the scene coming out of his house, looking across the buildings to him going through to break the ice to wash. 
I just thought that looked so real and so medieval. I love that, yeah. The forge, we, we built the village in forge, or Arthur built the village in forge, but the castle in the background was real. We went in the dining room scene, the long version was in the, that room. We just went in there, lit the fire and did the scene. And you know, I've got a good eye. I'm, I'm born with a good eye. 360 track around, a man is sitting there, contemplating his death. If I die, I need you to check in on my parents. They'll want to hear all about our time here on Mars. I know that sucks. And it'll be hard talking to a couple about their dead son. He's sitting in a spacesuit, and we just do a full walk around him, showing the, the impossibility of where he was. He ain't going to get out. As a rule, do you prefer working with like physical sets and natural conditions rather than CGI? No, I use CGI as a tool. It's a tool. I mean, of course, sometimes it, doing the big battle scenes, if I've got 400 extras like this, I'm shooting along them. It's very easy. I've fallen with a lot of people, like 200 meters. He's every, yeah, another 20,000 troops digitally. So you need that. Same with horses. There's many, actually. The best shot is the very high, wide shot looking from the forest across the lake. And you have the small figure of the point, and his officers are all standing waiting up. Pretty impressive. You get the scale of the lake. The lake is an airfield just outside of London. The forest is somewhere else near Gatwick Airport. <laughs> Am I thinking that's the same location as the opening of Gladiator? It is indeed. It's where, it's where Max really sat on his horse. Well, you know, we found a, a forest for Gladiator. The guy said, you can do what you want. You can burn it and rip it down. He says, because these trees haven't grown the way we want them. The soil is too sandy, so do what you want. And so we went in and we did the battle scene. It suddenly became the most valuable location near London. So it's been used again and again and again. The searchers, John Wayne, walking through the door in silhouette out onto the desert. Right away. I think the film is still the best Western ever made. The thing that the searchers got right was the space and time. The time it takes to ride the landscape, the time it takes to go somewhere. Where he says we're going off, he says, I'll see you in a year. And you're all on a horseback. I mean, it's such a different universe. It's almost like science fiction. For more directors picking favorite shots from their films, check out our video with Damien Chazelle.